بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين صدق الله العظيم We're looking at the first ayat the first verse of سورة البقرة which begins with al-huruf al-muqatta'at, the letters that are separated and not read together as, as one word. The question is that if the meanings of, the, of, of these al-huruf al-muqatta'at are not understood or cannot be understood, then why include something in your conversation, in your speech, that cannot be understood? If I start speaking to you, in French or Punjabi or or any other uh, any, a language that you do not understand, then my speech would be useless and futile, stupid, foolish. And if I say words or use vocabulary which is not appropriate, which is not suitable at this level, then that would also not be beneficial. And that is something that sensible, mature people do not do. They speak to people at their, lang- at, at, at their level. Why did Allah Azza wa include words in his speech, in his kitab, in, in, in the book that he revealed, which cannot be understood? That, that there's a reason. And, there's, and that reason is something that, worth, that, that is worth looking at, that is worth pondering over. The, this, this has been explained by numerous ulama, a number of scholars, that what is the reason, what is the logic of including these, alphabet, uh, these, these alphabetical letters in the, in the kitab, in the book. <clears throat> and what they've said, that this is a miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a miracle. It's a miracle because think about who is uttering these letters. The person who is uttering these letters he is an ummi, unlettered person. They are saying that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, is, he comes up with, with the Qur'an, he comes up with the text because he, he, just, he, 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 he just sits at home and he's heard stories during his conversation, during his journeys of Asham in Syria, during the trade caravans that, that he traveled with, a, a, couple of, a few journeys that he'd made. They say because of that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is able to come up with all those fantastic historical facts. And he articulates them and he says to them and that mesmerized people. But then the question is, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may have been able to speak very eloquently even though he was not know, known for, for such skills in the past. He is not a poet even though even children could compose poetry in, in Arabia. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never able to utter, to, to utter a piece of poetry. Uh, he was not able, able to recite two verses together. Once he, it is quoted that sometime, sometimes he, he read verses of, of poetry, but then he, he made a mistake and he said that Allah Azza wa has withheld that ilm and that knowledge from me. I can't. So a person, a man who is not known for his poetic skills, his literary skills, he's coming up with such a fantastic Quran. And then part of it is that he is an unlettered person who does not even know the, alpha, uh, the, the alphabetical letters. If someone who has not been to school, if you ask him to read the alphabets to you, you he, he will not be able to. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recites the, the letters as well. So not only he, he's coming up with fantastic, elegant uh, piece uh, of, of, of literature, He's, he's composing or he's, he's, he's narrating that, but on top of it, he's using the letters individually as well. The challenge is, what I'm saying is made up of these alphabetical letters that you claim to know better than myself. I am not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a man who's, who's, who's received formal education. I can't read, I can't write. Yet, I'm using those same letters that you make your speech of. Why is it that you are not able to compose something that, is, that can match what I am reading before you, what I'm reciting before you? So he is saying that I do not know these letters, but I'm receiving from the Divine, from the Almighty Allah. 
Someone else is, is revealing this Qur'an to me and I'm reading it to you. Because I can't read, I can't write. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has selected letters in a very, very structured, very structural order. If you look at the letters that they are, that the way they are, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there are about 29 uh, alphabetical letters all in all. Out of them, out of the 29, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Qur'an that, that we have, in the Qur'an, in Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'at, only 14 of the 29 are found. And these 14 of the 29 are such that when the letters are divided into different types by, by the Mujawideen, by people, experts in Tajweed, those who, are, uh, the, those who care about the recitation, then they, then they find a strange phenomena here. That from every category, half of it is found in, in, in Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'at. Whichever category, Rakhwa, Shidda, Mahmusa, Majhura, uh, whatever, you, you, you take them and you would see that half of, from each category, half are found in the Qur'an al So, this is a very, uh, in, even from a mathematical perspective, a very structured order of letters. And again, is, 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 is included, and again, is coming from someone who didn't even know all the alphabets. He didn't know how to read them, how, how to write them. So someone who's not studied the alphabets, he's coming up with, with these individual letters, and he is bringing, uh, he's, he has, uh, yeah, yani, he, he, he includes those letters at the start of a conversation, a, a surah or a chapter, in, a, in an order which is impressive, which is impressive, which, is, which does not appear to be random, which appears to be very careful and very, very structured, so very organized. So this is a sign, this is an indication that the Qur'an was not written by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as a person. This was a book that was revealed on him from the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. So, the, so this is uh, one of the reasons of Qur'an being mu'ajiz and the sign, sign of his i'jaz which, has, which had stunned and shocked the people of Arabia because they couldn't match the, the, the elegance of the Qur'an came in standard. So the, this was something that the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal shocked them with. You can't do this. This is a Quran. This is a revelation from the Almighty Allah. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. And elsewhere he says, تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الرحيم. Look at these letters. This is a revelation from Allah, the Mighty, the the the, the Merciful. تنزيل من الرحمن الرحيم. And and حاميم. So this is for usually these al al huruf al muqattaat are followed by a claim. That the Quran is a revelation from the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. So that statement is there, which nobody could nobody could argue against. They had to admit that if it's made of similar letters that everyone else, with the same letters that everyone else is familiar with, why is it that we are not able to compose something similar? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has presented al huruf al muqattaat These are present uh, under the instructions of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. As, a, as an evidence of him being a messenger of Allah and as an evidence of the Qur'an being revealed to him from the Almighty Lord. And this is why the people of Arabia, they understood and nobody objected to it, otherwise they would have. They, they, they could not because they understood that there was something in it which was of, of benefit and that benefit is as I've just explained. So anyway, still, even though I've spent about an hour on Al-Hurf al muqattaat and I've tried to cover all the relevant aspects here, but still, there is more to it that we could possibly delve into. Um, but inshallah, now we we'll move on because I think we've we've done sufficient. We've almost covered all the all the strands and all the views, all the viewpoints in regards to al huruf al muqattaat This is the the, the book la fi that has no doubt in it. ذلك الكتاب. What does ذلك is an indicative noun which refers to when you point at something, you say this, you say that. This is a kitab that I have in front of me. And that is a light. There's light there as well. And so there's ceiling here. Um, there's wall there. So this is something that this and that are indicative nouns which we are comfortable with, which we, are, which we, are, which we use daily, on a daily basis. The Quran uses the same word, ذلك kitab. But interesting part here is ذَلِكَ is used for distance, not for near. So if you say that, the, the word for distance is ذَلِك, 
and for the nearness, something is close at, 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 uh, at proximity, very, very, very nearby, you would use the word this. The question here is that it would have been more appropriate if it was said, Alif Lam Mim, هذا الكتاب لا ريب فيه. This kitab, there's no doubt in it. Why did he say ذالika, that kitab? What is meant by ذالika? This is an interesting discussion here as well. ذالika refers to what? In order to understand this better, it might be appropriate to, to, to include here uh, an objection that was raised by some uh, Orientalist scholars and some, some uh, Christian scholars. Uh, their, their argument was that ذَلِكَ refers to الْكِتَابُ الْمُقَدَّسِ أي الْإِنْجِيلِ That الْكِتَابُ الْمُقَدَّسِ The Injil, the Gospels ذَلِكَ refers to that 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 kitab, the, the, the Gospels that, was, that came before That kitab is the kitab لَا رَيْبَ فِي That has no doubt in it So this was, this was an interpretation This was a view presented by a Christian scholar And he tried to say that your Qur'an proves that the gospel is beyond doubt. He made that claim, and that claim was met with smiles and a bit of laughter um, and a bit of, bit of joke. Because even Christian academics and the Christian scholars are, know that the gospel does not have one, ver one version. Uh, the Injil does not have one ver version. There are more than one version, uh, and even the versions that are available, each is then divided into, there are different versions of one version. So, you can't, it, it'd be difficult for you to find two Injils together that are same word to word. So, it becomes, in, in that kind of climate, if someone says that, the, this, that book has no doubt in it, in the essence of it, Yes, in the essence of it, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in terms of principle, that Allah Azza wa gave Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam clear signs, he gave him a kitab, and he made him a nabi. In matters of principles, there is no, there is no discussion here. There is no disagreement. Yes, this Qur'an, مُصَدِّقُ لِمَا مَعْهُمْ It confirms the origin and the true source of the, of the earlier kitabs. That's perfectly okay. But to say that لَا رَيْبَ even the Christian academics don't agree with it. And to say that Dharika refers to that is very difficult in, in a rational way to, to, to prove, to, to argue that this Dharika refers to Inj Injil, it's very difficult to, to rationalize. Because normally when you use an indicative noun, the, 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 what, what, the, 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 point, the, the point of reference is somewhere earlier in, in the minds. So something that people are thinking about uh, or already, that is something when you, when you, you can possibly, to, in order to, to refer to it, you can use the indicative nouns. So people are talking about um, someone, they're, they're waiting for someone, and they're waiting for a student, and everybody is, is waiting for it, and the class is about to commence, but they can't start because one particular person is missing, and suddenly someone yells, he's here. Everybody will know. Who is he referring to? Or oh, there is he. Majority of the people will straight away know that the person that we're all waiting for so anxiously that's here. Or you're waiting for a bus and everybody is looking and trying to, 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 to see when, when it's going to arrive. Um, um, and someone then says, here, he, here is it. Or oh, there is it. So people would say, oh, they're looking for the moon. And they're looking and everybody's trying to find where it is. And suddenly someone yells, there is it. So that indicative noun would make sense because it's in the, man, in, in the mind of everyone. Here there's no discussion of Al-Injil in any context. So to say that Dhanika refers to it is, is difficult to, to, to accept. Maybe if Dhanika can refer to, then it would refer to the, await, the, the awaited book in the region of Medina where these verses were revealed. That awaited book that people were waiting for, that book is such a book that is phenomenal. La Rayba Fi has no doubt in it, and Allah is a source of guidance for the Muttaqeen, and in order to benefit from it, is Allah Yu'nun Bil Ghaib. So, that would, the awaited book is the book that is here. And it would be relevant because the Prophet ﷺ, when he came to Medina, in Medina there were communities that had lived there for centuries waiting for the final Nabi to come here. As, the, as mentioned in, in, in the 
in the books of tafsir there, the books of history of the region, which is specific to that region. The, the history, the, the kitabs that are, the, the history that was known to people of Medina and Yathrib and the suburbs in the region, it was, it, the, the, there were people that lived there waiting for the last prophet to appear because they had witnessed some signs in, according to the understanding which suggested that the last Nabi of the time would reside here and he'd migrate to this, this piece of land. There's, the, the, there are, there's, there's a discussion that Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu belonged to the, the, the host of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lived in that house which was built for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam probably four to five centuries prior to his arrival. A, a king from Tubba clan, Tubba tribe, he had built this house after having learned from the ulama of the time that this appears to be, this is where the, the final Nabi will migrate to, the final Prophet of Allah will migrate to. He had built that house there, where, where the, that spot, that, 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 that place, which was occupied by Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he comes, when he came to Medina, when he came to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, people would invite him, everyone was saying, Ya Rasulullah, come to my house, live with us, live with us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no. And uh, he, was, he did not even control the, the she camel that he was, uh, he was on. He had let it loose. And he said to everyone, Da'uha, da'uha fa'innaha ma'mura. Do not try to guide this, this she camel to a particular place because Allah, it, it is under the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is leading, the, leading this she camel and it will go to that spot where I'm meant to stay. Because of that, what the what the Almighty Allah Azza wa had destined and what was what had what was prepared there, five or six, four or five centuries prior to the Prophet Sallallahu arrival in Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu said, "I'm going to reside there," and the she camel comes and it sits at the door of Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al Ansari anhu, and he becomes very excited and very happily he takes the belongings of the Prophet Sallallahu inside. So. Kitab, all those people that were waiting, that were there, they were waiting for the arrival of a Nabi. And I mentioned earlier that there was uh, <clears throat> some of the Sahaba, they talked about some, it was well known, it's a documented fact, that the people of Arabia, they were frequently, whenever there, were, there was tension, they would, be, uh, they would be reminded by the learned community of the region, the Ahlul Kitab, they would say that we are waiting for a Nabi. Who is to appear in, in, in near future in the near future? Then when he appears, when he when he when when he when, he, when, he, when he's born, then Allah Azza wa Jal will grant him victory. And under his flag, we will fight you. And we will then we will settle our succor, our scores with you. And we will then fix you. And today you try and intimidate us, you do things to us that, that we do not consider to be fair, but we will not forget your treatment and will punish you then when that Nabi, uh, is, uh, Nabi is born. So they were all waiting for the birth of this Nabi and they thought that it would be from their amidst. And it was frequently talked about that the Nabi will, will be born and he will be given a kitab and he will come with the, with the, with the kitab which will wipe away all the, all the previous kitabs and it will dominate, it's, it will be very dominant and very, uh, very uh, overarching kitab, which will take control of the the philosophy and the and the and, and set the, the the narrative for the for the time to come. So that kitab that, that, that they were waiting for, Allah says, "Thadikal kitab fi." The kitab that you've been waiting for for centuries, that kitab has now been revealed. That is here. So if we interpret "Thadika" to refer to that awaited book, then it makes sense. But to say that this is this refers to Al Injil. It's difficult because for two reasons: a, Al Injil, even the Christian academics, um, they, they agree that the two, that, that there's a there's a significant um, alteration uh, that that has happened in it, um, and they also there's nothing in it that would in the context there there was no mention there wasn't a dominant Christian community in in and around Medina. So to say that Zalika referred to a kitab, a Christian uh, kit, uh, that was revealed to 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 the Christians which weren't, weren't even there at that time when these surahs were, were, were being revealed, it is a bit far-fetched idea. Another interpretation of Dharika is that Dharika refers to Ihdin al-Sarat al-Mustaqim. 
When you, when you pray to Allah Azza wa Jal and we said, إِهْدِنَ الصَّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the right path. The response to that is that right path is Al-Kitab. ذَلِكَ Al-Kitab That الصَّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ is this book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ There is no doubt in it. So ذَلِكَ can refer to. So if ذَلِكَ is taken as the interpretation and as the tafsir of Salat al-Mustaqeem, then it will bridge the two surahs together. It will link them. You prayed for a Salat al-Mustaqeem, that a Salat al-Mustaqeem is لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ So it would be a link between the two surahs too. The third interpretation of ذَلِكَ is that ذَلِكَ refers to the kitab which Allah Azza wa Jal has, has kept there in اللَّوْحُ Mahfuz. So in Allahul Mahfuz, in the preserved tablets in the in the heavens, there is the complete book. As the verses are being revealed, you do not have the complete book yet. So that book, the which is coming down, and with the, that which which came, which was revealed in Laylatul Qadr from the from the preserved tablets to the to the first heaven, that Allahul Mahfuz kitab, that that kitab which is meant to come in in in, in totality and which is given to, which is meant to be given to you, Ummah to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that kitab la rayba fi has no doubt in it. So that is the third meaning, and the fourth meaning that is also relevant here that can that is possible that interpretation is possible that is ذلك refers to al kitabu la rayba fi the kitab which you're trying to understand, which is you're trying to get, and you will never, you may struggle to, to fully understand that book, because that book is not in the reach of every individual. It is so rich in terms of its content, and it has so many elements of it. Every word, every letter of it, every sentence of it, is structured in a very unique manner. And it conveys a very unique uh, meaning there. And, and to understand every aspect of it is not possible for one human being, for one person. So it is difficult for you, O oh, oh people, O oh mankind. Allah can explain this to, to His Nabi because Allah says that uh, the, the whole thing is revealed into the heart, to, to the hearts of Sayyidina Muhammad, heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But for everyone else, it may not be possible. So that lofty kitab, that, that significant book, that a huge, that, 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 that gift of Allah to mankind, and that, that, that the book of wisdom, which you will not never be able to master. So it's not that, had it been hadha, it was something like, that's easy and that's, that, that's, that, that, that you can fully take. Thalika refers to something that is magnificent. Something and this is something which which was the, in in Arabic literature you find examples of it that when they refer to something which is not which is great and which is huge and which is significant and which is grand then they use the, the similar types of indicative nouns for it. So these are some some of the some of the relevant parts here. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. And so the summary of it is that ذلك teaches starts with us reminding us. It teaches with reminding us that this is a great gift of Allah. Receive it with, with a degree of respect. Show respect to it. So it fills our hearts. The, the start, the sabaq, the lesson starts with making treating Quran not in an ordinary manner. Quran is not an ordinary kitab. The Quran is a very unique kitab. So it, it teaches you to, to have adab and respect for the book. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. The next word or the next كلمة here is الكتاب. الكتاب the book. So as I just shortly point of uh, just a moment ago I mentioned I referred to it. الكتاب when the when the ayat was revealed the 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 Quran did not exist as one book. It was something that people had written on different parchments on the shoulder bones on some kind of uh, wood planks um, and sometimes uh, leaves, sometimes on uh, branches of palm tree. They had written on everything, anything and everything that was available to them because the paper was a scarce com commodity. This, this was not easily available. So they would write on whatever that, 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 that was available to them. And also the Quran was being revealed on a daily basis, sometimes more than once in a day. The Prophet ﷺ was receiving more verses. So it was not possible for someone to recite one ayat 
and then add more an ayat prior to it or a few pages prior to it or and then to some ayats later and between those ayats add more ayats so it was literally not possible so what they were doing at the time was that the Quran was not compiled as one kitab because it required frequent addition and frequent kind of change of the of the sequence of the ayats so one ayat that was read as ayat number two at some point later it becomes ayat number 152 so to add 150 verses between ayat number one and ayat number two was very difficult <clears throat> so the prophet allowed them to keep the quran and write it as they were but in memory it was being updated so someone had learned a surah to be in one order and a week later more ayats were added to it so he had to learn the next order and then the third order so so those who had mastered the, the Quran, it was not an easy, easy task at the time. But they did manage to do it and they were praised for it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa praised them and Sahaba praised them as well. So Al-Kitab at that time when it was being revealed, it was not really literally a kitab as people saw it. But what is said, what the word is saying that one day it will become a kitab. On those days people would carry the verses of the Quran in sacks. So a sack that contains some bones, some, some, tea br uh, some tree branches, some leaves um, and, and, and bit other, other things, some, uh, some, some planks of wood, uh, maybe sometimes even some, some stones and some rocks, uh, some tablets, they would be carrying them and that was their Qur'an in, in a sack that they would carry. So, but it was being promised, Al-Kitab, that the book would be written. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as I mentioned earlier, he encouraged Sahaba, he would, he, would, he, he would make it upon himself that every ayat of the Qur'an that was revealed should be written ASAP. So it gets formally documented onto, on, onto something. In fact, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, I think it's him who, who says that when Surah Al-An'am was revealed, and Surah Al-An'am is a long surah, the title, the cattle. If you go and look at the Qur'an Karim, it is a long surah that spans over a juice and quarter. And in that, that surah, when it was revealed, the Prophet sallallahu he says that this surah was revealed in Mecca. Nazarat jumlatan wahidatan. It was revealed in one go. It just came together. One and quarter juz, that is a lot of ayats, almost two, about 200 verses. When, when the surah was revealed, it says that, Sayyidina Abdul Abbas says, that the Prophet sallallahu instructed for the surah to be written there and then. So those verses, over 200 verses, were written and recorded in that night. So before daybreak, the whole surah had been written. Bear in mind, this was not an age of academia. This, is what, this was not a time when people would, were, were, were mastered the, 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 the writing and reading. This was not a common mode of preserving things. But the Prophet ﷺ was so concerned about making sure that, the, that every ayat of the Qur'an is preserved and nothing is lost, that he made that the, the entire surah was preserved and recorded during the night time. So it, in the morning, by the time it was morning time, by the time it was Fajr time, the book, the, the whole surah of over 200 verses had been recorded and preserved. So the Prophet ﷺ was making effort that people recite the Qur'an, people, the, 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 they preserve the Qur'an in the form of a kitab. And the Prophet ﷺ would make an effort and even the Qur'an says that this was a common, common tradition at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, al This is something, uh, this, is a, this is a part which I, was, which I did not discuss under the Tadween of quran -e kareem how the quran -e kareem was compiled. I'd left it for this, this moment, that when we talk about Dhalik al-Kitab, we we'll look at it, the Qur'an says that this was a common tradition. You see reference in the Qur'an, for example, there's an ayah in the Qur'an which says that the enemies, the, the Meccan community, they used to object and they used to say, وَقَالُوا أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ اكْتَتَبَهَا فَهِيَ تُمْلَى عَلَيْهِ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا They would they reference, how, how did they refer to the Qur'an? They would, they would refer to the Qur'an by saying that what is Qur'an? Tales and folklores, tales of early, earlier people. Which, the, which he, Sayyidina Muhammad, referring to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa which has penned them down, which he has got them written. So now they are recited upon him in the morning, every morning and evening, day in, day out, 
they are read to him and they are recited to him. That's, that's, that, this is what happens in his gatherings, in his, his, in, in his sittings. That's what happens. And this is, this is what he does day in, day out. He has nothing better to do. All he does is that he just wrote those stories of the of earlier people and he got them written and now they are read to him day in, day out. So, so the, 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 the engagement of the Prophet ﷺ in taking the Qur'an, conveying the Qur'an to people and speaking to people, that they, they summed it up in, in that phrase that he has penned them down, he's got them written, and now they, that all he does is he listens to, to, to its recitation morning, every, in the mornings and in the evenings, that's all he does. So even they admitted and they referred to it, iktatabaha, he has got them written. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked them to be, to, to, be, to, to be written down. And so they even, the Quran documents the fact that the kitab was written during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even the word itself, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. Al-kitab would refer to something which is written. It's not only in the minds. So when the ayat was revealed, people knew that it's referring to the kitab, i.e. the quran e kareem even though it is not, it's not, we do not have it in the form of a book, but ultimately it will become a book. It will be composed, it will be put together in the form of a book. So al-kitab refers to that book which, are, which, which, which we are being given in the form of the quran e kareem And people of Medina, the Jewish community, and the others, Ahlul Kitab, they were waiting for the, the kitab to come down, and they knew that this Al-Qur'an is the kitab that is awaited and that's promised. So, and, and then, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. This Al-Kitab is not only mentioned, this kalima, this word Al-Kitab, is not only mentioned at the start of Surah Al-Baqarah. This is found repeatedly in the Qur'an al-Kareem. About 27 times the word Al-Kitab is re- repeated in the Qur'an al-Kareem. تنزيل الكتاب أن ذلك الكتاب سو الكتاب أنزلناه إليك وهذا كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب سو إيفن ذا وورد كتاب إز ريبيتد أوفر أند أوفر إن ذا قرآن الكريم ويتش سجست ويتش إنديكيتس ويتش بروفز ذات الصحابة أندرستود ذا قرآن تو بي أ بوك أند ذي ذي يوز تو رايت إت داون بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم يوز تو ساي ساي تو ذيم that when you go to لا تسافروا بالقرآن إلى أرض العدو فإني لا آمن أن ينا له العدو the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say to them that do not travel with the Quran Kareem to the enemy land because I fear that if it falls into the hands of the enemies they will mistreat the kitab and we are supposed to have at utmost reverence for the book so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم knew that people he he was he was getting it dictated, people are preserving it, and the Prophet ﷺ was saying that do not take this Qur'an to the, to the enemy land. The Qur'an is supposed to be treated with utmost respect. So that is something we all so need to understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding, may He give us tawfiq. Inshallah, we'll continue with this subject after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.